A Warning to the Curious is a ghost story written by M.R. James. I think it was written during the First World War, but not actually published until the 1920s. And it's the the fact that it's written during the First World War. It's got this um, character of Paxton in it, which is interesting. It's set in this fictional sound, town of Seabra, but Seabra is in fact Oldborough, and you can go and visit some of the locations that M.R. James uses in the story and it's quite interesting to think that he would have been there so i started out um near the martello tower and going north and Oldborough is very very pretty up market during the summer it's super touristy it's kind of not bucket and spade seaside it's more up market than that the other place that i go to is southwold which is further north this is a, a double wide high street and on the right hand side behind those cottages and shops is the beach and we peel off to the left here and as we go along here in a little while is the back of the White Lion and the White Lion is a square building with a courtyard in the middle and so we see the back of it. To the left up here is the church and the church is like up on a little hill, very pretty church and they walk through the graveyard to get to where the crown was buried when they put the crown back. I walk through that in a little while. I almost get knocked off here. Thanks. And the white line is just coming up on the right hand side there and you can see that's the back of it and in a, in a little while you'll see the front of it as it faces onto the beach. And I think the church is up here to the left and then there's another big hotel here. I've been to Oldborough in the winter and it is very different. Then it's bleak North Sea. I had a little bit of a disagreement with a seagull here it was very keen to put me off my investigation so this is the beach long shingle beach which is steep it's a steep beach and had I turned right there, it would have taken me back down to the high street. Here I go north, though. On That building on the left-hand side is called Sluice Cottage. It's derelict. I took a look inside, and that's the Agers Cottage. That's where some people think the Agers Cottage is. And I've got, there's the Sluice. I've got to say, looks it to me. But the first location, really, is the White Lion or the Bear. And that's where the two gentlemen of substance meet Paxton. And this is the front of the white line. You saw the back a moment ago. And Paxton says that he's been to a church in Froston and he's seen the three crowns and he's went to investigate. So this is the very pretty church at Theberton. Um, which is about five or six miles away from Oldborough and in a warning to the curious Oldborough is Seabra and Theberton I think is Froston and this is where Paxton cycles one day and he comes to the church and he meets um, a caretaker in the church who tells him about the story of the three crowns the three holy crowns that protect England and he shows them the pretty porch and that's the three crowns there. I'll um, insert like a close up so you can see it. And then he meets the, the vicar or the rector who takes him back to his rectory and uh, shows him some details of uh, the, the legend of the three crowns. And of course, it, then it introduces the Agers. And from there, I think Paxton goes, he ends up in a curiosity shop and fate is um, guiding him to the crown and uh, that's the fate 
that's the warning to the curious perhaps you shouldn't be as curious when you get into these situations pretty church Theberton doesn't really look like crowns and uh, I think one of the guys from the uh, warning to the curious podcast says that they look more like cabbages or seaweed and yeah I get that I can see that uh, behind me, behind these bushes, is the road that goes north of uh, Aldborough out towards Sizewell, Southwell, that kind of place. This is called Sluice Cottage on the uh, Ordnance Survey map, and it's been suggested that this is the uh, fictional home of the Agers. Um, it's uh, 200 metres from the coast so behind it I'll do some photos of the other side of it um, and it was here that the Agers lived and one of them William Ager uh, went out and uh, protected the place where the crown was buried and eventually he died of consumption ultimately it was he was the spectre uh, that haunted uh, Paxton that's looking south towards Oldborough and then as I sweep round that building there is Sluice Cottage and a belt of trees behind looking north up the coast. The main road going out of Oldborough, Sluice Cottage, William Agers Cottage, belt of trees with a low mound. Should we go trenching across it looking for a holy crown? So this is the church in Aldborough. The bells have just stopped ringing, that flat sound. Um, but I think he talks about the, the peal of the bells in the, in the story. And this is the footpath that goes from Aldborough down towards the belt of trees and Acres Cottage. So I'm going to take a walk along here. Just in the distance is uh, Oldborough Church and you take a footpath through the graveyard at night, people looking at you, wondering where you're going. Behind this scrub over here is Sluice Cottage and then a belt of trees, the kind of place that you could stop on a sunny day and take your lunch as you look out. Now over there, looks like the moon's just rising. That's Sizewell nuclear power plant. Of course, that wouldn't have been there when James was here, would it? And actually, these trees don't really look that old. But let's go and take a look. The North Sea beyond the shingle bank north of Oldborough and that's where invasion would have come from the, the Germans or the Vikings or the French and the three holy crowns would have been buried to protect England. Perhaps one of them was buried here. Low mound, bank of trees, uh, the Sluice Cottage, William Agers Cottage is just behind that scrub over there. Yep. I would say this is probably the spot where if you were to put your hand into a rabbit hole and then open it out a little bit, you might find a holy Saxon crown. So after the crown's been returned, they go back to the hotel, sleep on it. In the morning, the two gentlemen go to play golf. They come back, meet Paxton, agree to go out to lunch. But when they come down, Paxton's already gone and they speak to somebody in the hotel and the chap says, yeah, you called for him. He's gone, he's left, he's gone out. And they come out of the hotel, which is about a mile away in the distance. You can just see the church tower. Um, and they don't know which way to go because the way that the beach sits here is that there's this high bank and then you don't know whether, you can't actually see the beach from the, from the bank. And it's April and there's a, a sea mist that's come in. Nothing at all like August where it's gorgeous. So they decide to turn right and head down towards the Martello Tower. It's about a mile away, so they uh, are chasing Paxton, and Paxton seems to be chasing somebody else, and they look at the tracks in the sand, and they can see Paxton's tracks, but then some other tracks, bony feet, um, potentially William Agers, 
and eventually they get to the Martello Tower to the battery and they look over the side and they see below Paxton with his face smashed in, pebbles and sand in his mouth, dead. Now the unwritten narrative here suggests that this is a story about World War I and World War I deaths and other people more learned than I have written a lot about that. Um, why wasn't Paxton fighting at the front and um, why did he want to go to Sweden? Uh, was he a pacifist or had he um, dodged the draft in some way? It's a lovely story, beautifully constructed and it's only about 10 pages and the nice thing is is that you can come to Oldborough and uh, Theberton and go and see the locations and walk along where M.R. James must have walked. In the story, Paxton visits, visits a curiosity shop and finds a prayer book, the Eager's Prayer Book, and it's got this line in it. And if you go to the war memorial outside the White Lion, it's got this inscription in. Who authored this? M.R. James, on behalf of the War Graves Commission. Just compare that last line with the line of the text from just a moment ago. And it's a stone's throw from the White Lion.